Hello and welcome to another episode of the podcast. This week I want to share a little bit of my personal burnout story and look at essentially the things that I was doing and the things that were in my physiology already that really created um, a recipe for burnout. And I'm going to share this stuff in the hope that um, you don't unintentionally um, set up your life so that it is also an unintended recipe for burnout. So I worked as a tax lawyer for 10 years before becoming a coach, 11 years. Um, does it really matter how long? <laughs> and um, I experienced, well, I was signed off work with stress in September 2018. And I paused to say that I experienced burnout because it was actually sometime after that that I was able to acknowledge that that's what I had experienced. I felt very resistant to burnout because there was a lot of perfectionist um, stuff going on with me still, where in my mind I was like, but I wasn't that bad, like maybe I was okay. And I think because I was quite high functioning, so I sort of I would be struggling but would keep going regardless, it was it was hard to it was hard really to accept or to see that I was in burnout. It's not like I became bedridden or had a real sort of mental health crisis and was unable to function. But at the same time, I wasn't sleeping. I would wake up each morning in tears and I spent most of my days in in a bit of a fog, which I now understand was the free state because my entire nervous system was so overwhelmed, the only way that it could manage that overwhelm was to essentially shut down and dissociate. So whilst I was out there doing stuff, I was sort of there, but but not there, if that makes sense. So what I want to do today is just talk about some of the things within my physiology and the way that I was behaving that would have contributed to that burnout, because I think it's very easy for us to get to that place and be like, how have I got here? And then you sort of look around at people that maybe have similar lives to you or sort of, you know, they do similar amounts of hours and things. And it's like, but they aren't. Why aren't they here? What's wrong with me? Right. And it becomes this very shamey process of like, I'm broken. Other people are broken. What have I done wrong? So the first thing that I really want to focus on is just recognizing that in the end, burnout is an energy issue right there are insufficient resources in the system to deal with the demand placed on that system the system becomes overwhelmed for a prolonged period of time and burnout occurs right and so if you can imagine two people go into the same job and one of them starts with resources of a hundred and the other one starts with resources of a thousand. The person with resources of a thousand is going to be able to do an awful lot more before their system becomes overwhelmed than the person with resources of a hundred. Right. And so, what are the things that potentially impact our resources when we're going to work? Right. And so, or doing anything in our lives, right? I think work, burnout is often related to workplace things, but obviously it can it can come in other ways as well. So when we are teeny tiny babies and developing, the way that we develop, the amount of support that we get from parents, the amount of attunement and co-regulation that we get, so like how much physical touch do we get? How much time do we get with mum? It all impacts are in a resource system and development right and if we are sick a lot when we're kids if we are exposed to mold if we um if we have to have certain operations all of these different things can impact our overall internal resource level our internal energy and very stressful childhoods through whatever reason, and into our early adulthood as well, actually have an impact on our cellular health, right? So our cells don't function quite as optimally when we've experienced lots and lots of stress. And the amount of energy availability in our cells is diminished. 
So we've got less energy available, but also the efficiency of the cell to produce and use that energy is less, right? So you can go into your first job already at a disadvantage biologically because what you have already experienced in your life has left you depleted. Now, you may not feel depleted in your day-to-day, -day, right? So you may not know about this, but if there's been a lot of stress in your past, if there have been illnesses, operations, childhood trauma, car accidents, like big T trauma, little T trauma, a little T trauma, I mean, like, um, but the developmental stuff, parents were emotionally disengaged. We didn't get the support and the love we need. Big T trauma, what we would more traditionally consider, consider trauma, car accidents, going to war, um, you know, like physical or sexual assault, that, that kind of thing. So whatever is in our path is impacting us, we bring it with us, okay? So we've got cells that are less efficient, having to work harder. And then for me, so that was my situation, lots of little T trauma, not, not, not any big T trauma as far as I can remember. Um, and then I also then was very, very into um, dieting, trying to be slim and exercising, right? So if you think about my system, I was already depleted. I had like not serious illnesses, but quite a lot of illnesses when I was a kid. I'd had some operations. Um, my physiology probably wasn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't say I was at 100 compared to 1,000, but I certainly wasn't at 1,000, right? And then I strongly, heavily, severely restricted what I ate. And in particular, and ooh, particularly, I restricted the intake of healthy fats that I ate, right? And one thing that our cells need for good cellular health is this really healthy fatty coating around the outside of the cell. It's the myelin sheath, right? So we need this healthy fatty coating around the outside of the cell. So I'm in this position where my cells are not functioning as optimally. They need the stress that I was under when I was at work meant that they needed more energy, but they weren't giving they weren't providing enough energy because that was inefficient because of the stuff that had gone in the past and then I wasn't feeding myself properly so the cells were being further impacted and then I had a really strict exercise regime which again in my mind was all about like setting myself up for the day and if I go and do some exercise I can get through my day at work but again, another drain on energy so I would spend an hour or an hour and a half in the gym most days um, I also did quite a lot of walking. Sometimes I would do spin classes on top of weight training. Like it was, it was intense. Wasn't then fueling myself properly, and the amount of stress and anxiety in my body also contributed to poor sleep. So you can just see they're like the layers stacking in of energy depleting things against a system that was already in a deficit. Right. And so when you then added in running a legal team, being responsible for like 10 other lawyers day to day, dealing with all of their problems, dealing with a lot of clients, dealing with litigation cases that were worth tens of millions most of the time. Right. So you pile all that on and all of that stress and the expectation that you'll be permanently available and that you can multitask about a million things at once. Add that in, and you can see how very quickly you get to a point where a system that's already definitely not firing on all, all, on all cylinders becomes overwhelmed, right? And that, for me, was like the textbook recipe for burnout. But in my mind, I was eating healthily. I was exercising. I was trying to focus on my sleep. So I thought that I was doing all of this stuff that was good for me. But it wasn't good for my system and where it was at at the time. Like the most helpful thing that I could have done when I woke up at 4.30 in the morning 
was to lie, do a relaxing meditation or something, find a way to get myself back to sleep, or if not back to sleep, to just rest instead of getting up, dealing with any work emails that had come in overnight, getting myself out of the house at 6 a.m. to get to the gym, to then go to work, to not eat properly, to push myself all the way through the day, to get home, to go to sleep, to do the same cycle again, right? And really understanding when we're dealing with burnout and when we're looking at this stuff, the impact that the stress in our lives actually has on our, on our biology, on our physiology, on our cellular health, and then taking steps to support our biology wherever it's at. So there's many supplements you can take. There's lots of foods that you can eat. You know, I talked about the healthy fats, so you know, nuts, seeds, avocado, if you're vegetarian, vegan, salmon, mackerel, like all of these different things that we can use to support the, the biology that I just wasn't doing. Um, once we have that understanding, we can start to move to a place where we stop, we stop living our lives with a recipe for burnout and we start to live our lives with a recipe for health, for longevity, for feeling good, right? And the cellular health is just is just one part of the puzzle, you know, because at the same time, what I was experiencing was also nervous system dysregulation. And we also want to look at that. You know, when I went from phases of being very stressed, that high sympathetic activation, that fight or flight phase, I would get in from work, I would be exhausted, there would be a collapse, I would be down in that low dorsal, um, low, low parasympathetic branch of, um, of the nervous system. And, and over time, that bouncing between the two, the stress, the collapse, the stress, the collapse, just became so overwhelming for my system that I experienced full burnout. Right? And this is why when I talk about burnout, getting the cellular health piece in check, getting the nervous system piece in check, looking at energy availability, energy balance, and how are we supporting the system with its energy is so, so important in all facets and areas of our lives, right? So I hope that that is a helpful overview for you. I hope that it's given you some stuff to think about. I have a two-hour Burnout Buster Masterclass Right, that goes into this stuff in a lot more detail, gives you the supplements, gives you the food, gives you the processes that you need to follow to burn out proof your life. And whether that's prevention, so we want to not get there, or you're already there and we want to like resolve it. Like it's all covered in that class. And for listeners of the podcast, I want you to so I will share the link to the class in the in the show notes. So I did the class at a really accessible price of £199. But it's so important and just as like as part of this episode to really go into this in more detail there is a 50% off code that you can use um with that class so the link that's below if you use the the code podcast you will get a 50% discount so you can get that class for just under 100 pounds and I really really recommend that you take that class that you digest the materials you learn it and you apply it and then you also pass on bits that feel like you feel comfortable to pass on to your kids, your family, your friends, your clients. Because the more of this knowledge and information we can spread, the healthier we can all be short term and long term. So I hope that is super helpful. Um, do not follow my recipe for burnout. Like take good care of yourself. And if you have any questions or there's anything that you would like to talk to me about on this topic, please do just get in touch. Like all the links for like my socials, how you can work with me, et cetera, are in the show notes. Okay, take care. Go and eat some healthy fats and have a great day.